Today, November 11th, is Veterans Day. What is your name, please? My name is James White. My name is James White. My name is James White. Only one of these men is the real James White. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Barry Nelson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, to relax tension, soothe irritability. Anison. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening bud. All ready for some fun tonight. Hey, Barry. What? I understand your picture, Mary Mary, is the number one box office champion. Congratulations. Yes, as of this week, bud, it, it, it is number one. I, I'd be happier if I had a percentage, but I say that only because, <laughs> I say that only because I'm greedy. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, I couldn't miss being number one with you in it, no matter what it is. All right, panel, please open your envelope, take out that first card, and follow along with me, if you will. I, James White, am a member of one of the proudest companies in the United States Army, the honor guard of the 1st Battalion reinforced of the 3rd Infantry. To 18 members of the honor guard is given the singular privilege of maintaining an eternal vigil at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. Each man in our group is especially selected and trained for this elite duty and must meet the most exacting physical and mental standards. Night and day, rain or shine, we of the Honor Guard pace measured steps before America's tomb of the unknown soldier, a shrine to all who have fallen in defense of our nation. Signed, James White. <laughs> And these three gentlemen all claim to be James White, sentinel at the tomb of the unknown soldier. We'll start the questioning with Tom Poston, if we may, Tom. Thank you, bud. Uh, uh, number three, do you know where uh, the, the term the unknown soldier first uh, became, first was used in this country? Do you happen to remember? Uh, no, sir, probably the Civil War. Uh, number two, do you know who first uh, designated the unknown soldier as such? Well, uh, sir, actually, uh, the, uh, we picked these people uh, for the uh, tomb. Uh, actually, it was originated thought in 1921. And uh, this was uh, exactly when, of course, the uh, soldiers were picked. And uh, from then on, uh, I don't know. Thank you. Uh, number one, do you know the name of the unit that guards the Fort Knox? Uh, is it, does that come under your same... No, uh, sir, it does not. It's an armored unit. It's an armored unit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Peggy Cass. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, how did you get chosen to be on the Honor Guard? I was a member of the Honor Guard Company first. From Honor Guard Company, we're selected. There's 18 of us to march the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Number three, but how do you get to be in the Honor Guard Company? To get in the Honor Guard Company, uh, there's several ways. Actually, most of the men that come in there are selected from different army posts around the United States uh, as volunteers. Thank you. Number two, where, what did the 3rd Infantry, where was the 3rd Infantry in World War II? Uh, actually, uh, we were in various places, mainly all over, carrying out these honored duties. Oh, thank you. Barry. Number two, what kind of rifle were you carrying up there? Uh, United States caliber M1. Number one, what sort of uniform do you wear in the summer? We wear the uniform similar to what you're seeing, only it's lightweight TW. It looks the same to you during winter, but it's a different type of material. And what hours do you spend guarding? There are three reliefs. Each relief has a responsible for 24 hours. We're four men on each relief. One man is on one hour and off three for a period of 24 hours, then another relief comes on. Thank you. Number three, has there ever been an incident? to ruffle the calm? No, sir. Uh, number two, what do you wear in the rain? Uh, sir, we uh, have what's called a dress green or a plain raincoat, which is green. 
Uh, thank you. Kitty. <laughs> uh, number two, could you tell me what reinforced means, 1st Battalion reinforced of the 3rd Infantry? Uh, this sentence means, uh, man, that we are grouped each uh, year or so. We are reinforced by different people from other uh, units. Thank you. Uh, number one, number three said there's never been an incident of any kind. What happens during some of those terrible Washington summers when it's very hot? Does no one ever faint? Well, we're not, well... You just would no, rather not answer that, no, all right? <laughs> I don't blame you. Number three, can you tell me what other shrines or monuments are guarded by the 3rd Infantry, the 1st Battalion? Number there, three. There are no other shrines guarded by the 3rd Infantry. Thank That's you. all the time we have. It is time for you now to mark your ballot. So will you kindly do so, panel, at once, <clears throat> without change and without consultation, if you please, as you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? I, I, I always had trouble with that one. All right. Tom, for whom did you vote? I didn't know enough to ask or they were too smart for us. I, I just had a guess, and I guessed that it would be number two. He knew when the, the actual Arlington Tomb, tomb was erected, so... Peggy. Boy, they really all knew so much. I mean, I think they should all be on the honor guard. But I voted for number two because he seemed to really know about it. I mean, like, you know, 1921 and all that stuff. He just seemed knowledgeable to me. Barry. Uh, I almost voted for number two. He was very good. Uh, and he called me sir, and I kind of liked that. <laughs> <laughs> Most people just call you bud here. But... <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like the uh, spontaneity of uh, number one when uh, Kitty mentioned about the fainting and all. Thank you, bud. <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> well, I say it's an honor to meet either one of you three. But I voted for number one because when I asked him again about were there any incidents, he had too much pride in the outfit to admit that there ever could be such a thing. So it's two for two and two for one, and that's the way we go for the truth now, to learn which of these gentlemen actually has the privilege of being one of the sentinels at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Will the real James White please stand up? your lessons well. May I say to you, Mr. White, that we are not only proud but exceedingly humble uh, at meeting you and knowing what it is you that you do because it must be a very prideful thing. It gives this nation one of its richest heritages and something of which we can all be proud thanks to the way it's carried on. Our compliments and congratulations. Now, number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? You got half the votes. My name is Charles Allison, and I work for Heritage Cavaliers, a sightseeing company. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name, and what do you really do? Uh, I'm a uh, defensive uh, halfback for the New York Giants. My name is Hewitt Barnes. <laughs> One of the best players we got on the team. Oh, man, he sure he is. is. Congratulations to you. And to all of you, you did a wonderful job of fooling the panel. And checking, of course, we find they were all incorrect. There are four at $250 each for a total, gentlemen, of $1,000 from Anison coming your way. And, of course, a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. Thank you very much for sharing your evening with us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> about Anison.
The big difference in Anison makes a big difference in the way you feel. Minutes after taking Anison, headache pain's gone. So tension's gone. Irritability's gone. You're in control again. You see, Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, a combination of ingredients with a particular ingredient missing from aspirin, still missing with buffering, combined in Anison. Anison relieves all these headache miseries, relieves pain fast, to relax tension fast, soothe irritability fast. Millions get fast relief and no stomach upset. The big difference in Anison makes a big difference in the way you feel. Now, now, let's have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Barry Langford. My name is Barry Langford. My name is Barry Langford. Panel, please follow along with your copies of this story, if you will. I, Barry Langford, am the owner of the Langford Silver Galleries in London, England the largest retailer of modern and antique silver in existence. While remodeling our vaults a few years ago, we discovered a room beneath the floor which had been sealed off for more than 50 years. It contained a collection of antique silver worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. I am considered an authority in my field and I have lectured extensively. Probably my most successful lecture is one which I have delivered some 40 times in British prisons. How to collect silver safely. <laughs> Signed, Barry Langford. <laughs> Three gentlemen panel, all claiming to be Barry Langford, an expert on antique silver. We'll start the cross-examination this time with Barry Nelson, if we may, Barry. Uh, thank you, bud. Number uh, two, uh, how do you... Uh uh, what would be the worth of a George the First silver spoon, the size of a soup spoon? Oh well, uh, there's no uh, there's no direct, direct uh, answer to that one. It all depends on uh, on demand and supply. Uh, you know, a thing like that might range anything from um, uh, give it to you in, in pounds, anything from uh, five pounds to twenty-five pounds. And it would de also depend if uh, somebody wanted it to complete a part of a, a set. Thank you. Number th uh, three, what would be the marking on such a spoon? Well, you would have, first of all, the uh, lion of England. Then you'd have a leopard's head. And if the spoon was produced before 1730, you would have a crown on the leopard. That Thank Kitty. you. Uh, number one, what kind of silver was this that was discovered? Well, it was all mixed silver. From, uh, from how long ago? From 1890 backwards. Number one, number two, how long has uh, sterling been uh, a prerequisite, a, a marking, a hallmark? Since the reign of uh, King John, about 13, 1300 roughly, I think it was 1335. Uh, number three, well, who is Wartsky? Uh, I've never heard of him. Number one, have you ever heard of Wartsky in London? We don't like to advertise the opposition, madam, but I think he's in Regent Street. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> number two, uh, what is the Tooth Gallery in London? Uh, the, uh, that's, um, gallery where they sell a certain amount of silver. Thank you. Tom, number three, did you say you'd never heard of Wartsky because you didn't want to mention a competitor's name? Well, to put it politely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, number three, what is, uh, what is tarnish on silver? Well, tarnish is just the uh, sort of oxide that comes on silver after, if, if it's been exposed to the open air for too long, it gets ox oxidized, actually. Uh, uh, number one, is that uh, strictly accurate? Is that the, the, what this color is silver? Uh, yes, I would say the same thing, yeah. And number sometimes the weather helps a bit. Thank you. Number two, uh, how do you prevent that? Uh, well, uh, by regular, uh, regular use and regular cleaning. Uh, clean the silver about once a month. Peggy. Thank you. Number two, where are the silver vaults in London? They're in the Chancery Lane. Uh, number three, what is the hallmark of Bristol? Uh, well, being a dealer in London, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I'd Number one, what is the hallmark of uh, Dublin? Um, a uh, Number one, uh, uh, He's pinching know. my act. In <laughs> 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 my time. <laughs> he's right. Yeah, he's right. 
Huh? He's right. I didn't hear him. What do you say? A uh hawk. -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, uh, number two. Oh, I didn't hear him. That's all the time we have. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's time to mark your ballots, even on meager information, so please do so at once, and no change, of course, permitted, no consultation permitted, more importantly. And uh, mark now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. Uh, he looks just like the kind of a nut that would lecture on how to collect <laughs> silver <and> prints. <laughs> I, I liked them all, but I... Peggy, didn't. what is your choice? I didn't get to ask any questions, hardly. <laughs> but I did not vote for number three because you should know the hallmark of Bristol, which is, in fact, an anchor. And number two said the tooth gallery was silverware, indeed it's paintings. So by letting him out, I got one. And he looks like a nice boy, too. <laughs> Barry, which one did ah, you choose? Gee, number three, I wish you knew the hallmark of Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> you voted for number three, all right? Kitty. Well, uh, uh, because of Peggy's reasoning and so forth, I voted for number one, but my main reason for voting number one is he has the darndest twinkle. <laughs> and I think that's the kind of a guy who would write a book about how to collect silver in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling oh, right. because he found a quarter of a million dollars worth of silver. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go now into the charm circle and learn now who has come closest to the truth among our panelists as we learn which one of these gentlemen actually is the expert on antique silver. So will the real Barry Langford please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> The hallmark on Bristol silver, which cost me 500 bucks, is not an anchor. What That's the it? hallmark of Birmingham. Well, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What did you with me? <laughs> there is no hallmark for Bristol. Oh, it's got to my little hallmark book. Now you've got to learn all over again. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? Uh, Henry Thirty. I'm American correspondent for the News of the World, London. And number three, you've got a vote. What is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Gerald Lawrence, and I'm cruise director on North German Lloyd's flagship Bremen. <laughs> well, in checking the votes this time, we found that the panel got a little smarter and a little tougher to fool, and there, were, there was only one incorrect vote at $250, and that comes to you from Addison as well as a gift package of all their fine products. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us. Hope you had as much fun as you brought to us. Good night, and God bless you. Now, here is a word about a new sleep product. Don't lie awake again tonight. Take Sleepies. The next thing you know, it's morning. Sleep safely with Sleepies, effective as phenobarbital, yet no drug hangover, no drug habit. When your wake center is active, you can't sleep. Medically proved Sleep Ease turns off the wake center, brings on the start of sleep. You close your eyes, next thing you know, it's morning. Sleep Ease used as directed effective as phenobarbital, yet so safe. No drug hangover, no drug habit. And now a word about another fine product. New shoes? No. New shoe polish. New Griffin liquid wax shines bright like a new layer of leather. This test on glass shows the difference. This other leading black polish looks thin, watery, but Griffin has the rich, bright look of a new layer of leather, covers evenly with a richer, deeper shine. Get Griffin liquid wax. Griffin shines bright like a new layer of leather. Now let's meet our third team of challengers. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Catherine O'Hay Granahan. My name is Catherine O'Hay Granahan. My name is Catherine O'Hay Granahan. Panel, please follow along with your copies of this one, if you will. I, Catherine O'Gay Granahan, O'Hay Granahan, forgive me, am treasurer of the United States. My signature appears on all the paper money printed during my term of office. 
As the official custodian of the government's funds, my duties include receiving the Treasury's monies, keeping accounts of all financial transactions, and replacing burned, mutilated, or worn out currency. I am also responsible for the Treasury's bank balance and cash more than 500 million checks every year. Signed, Catherine O'Hay Granahan. Very well, panel, these three ladies all claim to be Catherine O'Hay Granahan, Treasurer of the United States. May we start with Peggy Cass. Peggy? I'm very sorry, but I must disqualify myself because I know one of the ladies. I'll bet you sign the bill. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know her, so I can't say anything. Oh, that's too bad. All right. Barry, then, if you'll start off for us. Yes. Um, number two, how much uh, paper, uh, paper money is mutilated each year and must be replaced? In money value or number of in, bills? In money, in money value. Uh, the actual money value is a very large amount. Uh, and uh, the exact dollars, I cannot Could give you at this time. Could you just roughly tell me? Uh, the amount is in the millions. Yeah. Well, uh, number uh, one, your office is located where? In Washington. Is there anything you have in your office that might be a little different from another office uh, where the men have it? Some feminine thing that you put in, perhaps? Yes. What would that be? Well, I think the decorations are very feminine. Kitty. And number three, can you tell me the name of your predecessor? Uh, Mrs. Smith. And number two, does the name O'Connor mean anything to you in terms of the treasury uh, of your office? Not uh, particularly. And number one, uh, I don't want to be personal, but uh, what is the Treasury's bank balance at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I can't tell you that exactly, and I wouldn't want to quote the wrong amount. Uh huh. You don't keep your bank balance as well as we have you to. You mean then. my personal account? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, when you, when you write out your name on all the bills that we have, how is this uh, uh, put on the, uh, all the other bills? How is it superimposed? Oh, well, I uh, sign my name a number of times, and uh, then it's printed or reprinted. Thank you. Place. Number two, how long are you in office? Oh, Tom. Thank you. Number three, do you know who guards Fort Knox? Who guards Fort Knox? Well, I don't, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's just a very good armed guard. Do you know what unit that is, number two? Thank you, number one. Uh, it's uh, under the direction of the Treasury Department. Yes, it is. Do you happen to know, number one? I'm trying to clear this up from the first group of questions. It really is not under the direction of the Treasury Department. It comes under the Mint. And that's not your department no. at all. Thank you. Uh, number one, are bills, uh, is money ever actually lost? Is it just completely lost? Does it just go into thin air, dust, and so forth? Is there much money lost? Are in you this addressing thing? me? Yes, ma'am. Sir. <laughs> yes, there's money lost. How, how can you tell? How can we tell? People report it. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, there you are. Ask that kind of a question, you get a direct answer. And the answer right now is for you to mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once and with no consultation, as you well know. Voting as you go now for number one, or for number two, or for number three. All right, all ballots marked. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, just to be mean. <laughs> it's to lose some money. That's right. And of course, Peggy, yours goes as a disqualifier. What, what did you write about? Out. <laughs> Barry, what is your choice? I voted for number uh, two, bud. Uh, she broke my heart when she told me the amount of money that was being confiscated. <laughs> <laughs> and Kitty, you have a choice. Well, I voted for number one. Uh, I like the way she said, people report the money they lose. <laughs> it sounded as though a lot of people had reported a lot of money to her. Very well. Now we have one disqualification, then it's broken up one, two, three, down the line there. Let's see how it works out. As uh, truth comes and stares us in the face, see if we can look it squarely in the eye and say that we were right. Learning now which of these ladies actually is the treasurer of the United States. So will the real Catherine O'Hay Granahan please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much How for being with you? us. 
Is that the one you knew? I know her from Philadelphia. She signed my money in real ink. Oh, wow. Right. Yes, we had a good time that night, mean, didn't we? Yes, indeed. You mean the rest of us all have bills? We all have bills signed in, in faking? No, but I mean, I have her autograph on my money. <laughs> That's the best place to have it. Thank you for being with us. Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My real name is Doretta Hoffman and I'm Dean of the College of Home Economics at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas. Ah. <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Florence Linden and I work for the Bromley Ski Area at Bromley Mountain, Manchester, Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, the uh, shopping is going to be good in your department because there were two incorrect votes, actually, and one disqualification, which counts as an incorrect vote. And therefore, three times $250 is $750, even if the treasurer is here. <laughs> Watch out for the tax, though. You never know. She's sitting right by you. May it bring you great joy. That comes to you, of course, from uh, Anison, as does a gift package of all the fine products of the makers of Anison. Thank you, ladies. Hope you enjoyed sharing your evening with us. We did. Good night, and God bless you. But we'll all be examining our money a little bit more closely from now on. Be very careful if Peggy tries to pass one on you that has an extra signature. <laughs> it may be a phony. Thank you for being your wonderful selves. It's always a joy to be with you and share an evening. Thank see you, you next week. See all of you next week. Don't forget to join us again the same time next week. And I'll see you, of course, tomorrow on the daytime show. In the meantime, this is Bud Collier saying good night for Anison and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. has been brought to you by Sleepy's, the non-narcotic sleeping tablet for a good night's sleep. Sleepy's. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded. Sleepy's.